Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. John Agar and Shirley Temple are very easy names to remember in the entertainment scene if you're in tune with the Golden Age Hollywood movies. He was married to this cute lady, who was one of the most famous child stars of her era, and himself a brave warrior of westerns and cult B movies. How their marriage collapsed and the events that ensued thereafter would continue to make headlines for lovers of movie creativity. Did John Agar regret marrying Shirley Temple? I have always thought of John Agar as one man that is worthy of emulation for his heroism on screen and off the camera. Each time I recall what became a dark story about his private life, I always wonder why things happen the way they do. A man who rose from a regimented life to become one of Hollywood's leading men of post-World War II westerns, concluding as the 1950s B-movie icon of interest. His historic meeting and marriage to legendary child actress Shirley Temple is one of those matches that would excite most young people. Sadly, their marriage ended the way it did. There are indeed lessons to learn from their circumstance. John Agar was a tall and handsome gentleman and a gallant sergeant officer of the U.S. Army Air Corps at the time he met Temple. He was just a 24 years intelligent guy doing a regular stint as a physical education instructor when his buddy arranged for him to bodyguard a 16-year-old teenage superstar, Shirley Temple, to a Hollywood party, put together by her boss, David O. Selznick. One thing led to another, and a few months after, the media was agog with the news that the couple was getting married. The wedding itself was a media sensation, as several gossip columnists besieged the venue from across the globe, just to get a headline for their tabloid. Thousands of fans were also involved, with all the noise generated and several fan mails flying in from all corners, as her enthusiasts screamed their lungs out in excitement. From what we already know, John Agar later became a popular movie-leading man, even though he never had an initial plan of becoming an actor. Remarkably, he was able to immortalise his name as a sci-fi legend. This adventurous journey all began one night. John Agar was wrapping up his army conscription when what seems like a fortune knocked on his door. Was it a coincidence or what some religious persons would describe as the hand of God? The fact is that it must have been Providence that he was introduced to Shirley Temple. Famous Shirley Temple was first presented to the silver screen in 1932 with Red Haired Alibi. She went on to appear in over 50 films during her highly successful career. If there is anything fans cherished so much about this cute lady, it's her curly locks, the dimples, and those tap-dancing moves, often enhanced by her delightful singing vocals. From a very little beginning, Temple suddenly rose to an enviable status in the entertainment scene as a teenage star. She practically became Hollywood's biggest sensation of the Depression era. As they say, nothing good lasts forever. After her career climaxes, it is only natural it fades out like thousands of other legendary icons. That, however, is not what is occupying the public space about this lovely lady. Fans seem to remember the issues that transpired between her and her first husband, John Agar, at this time more than ever. It appears she had reached the apex of her career when this marital hullabaloo took centre stage of her fame. Very few people still fondly remember the fascinating curly-haired teenage girl who made American homes happy with her performances in classic films like The Little Colonel, Poor Little Rich Girl and The Little Princess. Around 1939, her character was a major box office attraction. Temple was so lucky to have a mother who helped her discover her talent early in life. But what about the man who became her husband, Agar? Back in her school days at the Westlake School, she had a classmate who is related to John Agar. He happens to be the older brother of her friend. So she had an early glimpse of her future husband back in the days before they met again, in that historic escort to Selznick's party. But several years after, their marriage failed. Some facts emerged suggesting that John Agar was so unhappy that he even tried to sabotage her political career following her nomination for an ambassadorial position, but for the intervention of Ronald Reagan, who was said to have saved the situation 
as revealed by classified FBI documents. John Agar ventured into full-time acting after marrying the film star Temple and was very useful in a series of classic John Ford action films in the last part of the 1940s, before his marriage to her withered, and fans began to ask and wished it never happened. Like I was told in a religious class, men will always have their say while fate will always have her way. Agar's initial roles were among his best, in Ford's successful westerns, Fort Apache, She Wore a Yellow Ribbon, and The Sands of Iwo Jima, readily come to mind. John Agar was born in Chicago to Lillian and John Agar Sr., a wealthy meatpacking family, although he had most of his childhood experience in Los Angeles. Childhood was fun for little Agar, coming from privileged parents. He was opportune to attend the propitious Harvard School for Boys, after which he moved over to New York's esteemed Trinity Pauling Prep School. Not too long, and sadly too, the U.S. was confronted with the World War Crisis. Twenty years old Agar knew it was time to offer his service to his fatherland, after he left his studies and joined the Army Air Force. His solid physique was advantageous as he obtained basic training in Texas and became an instructor in physical training at March Field in Riverside, California. When Agar was assigned to escort little Shirley Temple to that party, he never knew that he was into an assignment that would change his life forever. Luckily for him, the movie mogul Selznick got interested in his rugged good looks and unshakable appearance as they met. Not long after, Selznick gave the young veteran a six-year movie contract which included acting lessons. Agar's young girlfriend, the cute Shirley Temple, was happy as their love soared from one level to another, and despite her mother's initial objection, the young lovers were already obsessed with each other. Before we know what was happening, it was already in the news that the marriage would hold. The media kept their watchful eyes on Agar, the man without a past, who suddenly wants to take their darling Temple home. The challenging media spotlight is what Agar, who was new to the system, had to deal with. Every move they made was reported, whether Temple was visiting him at his army post or any other place. She was always followed by a horde of nosy reporters and photographers. I heard that at their wedding venue in Los Angeles they had given 500 invitees, while about 5,000 fans crashed the venue. They all gathered outside the church, hoping to have a glimpse of their favourite actress and her lucky husband, so to say. For the following few years, the thrilling couple was among the trend, often seen on the pages of magazines. But inside the marriage some troubling issues lingered, and when they had their daughter, Linda Susan, it seemed their joy was cemented, but you can never tell how human emotion and behaviour operate. Towards the end of the 1940s we began to see signs of trouble between the couple. Agar was involved in excessive drinking and arrested for driving under the influence, coupled with the usual celebrity philandering, which became part of his life. All that infuriated Temple that she filed for a divorce. Following the separation and other issues that trailed Agar's career, he may have found total comfort in the wine bottle. Now in the league of a divorcee with a dwindling career, Agar tried to re-establish himself by keeping a straight face, while Temple reserved her energy in caring for her baby. In 1969, Richard Nixon nominated Temple for the ambassadorial office, a development that requires the FBI to thoroughly investigate her background to determine her true personality before the request is approved. Reports say the FBI went to a large extent in their investigation, including interviewing all those who were in one way or the other connected to her. They also investigated her political views and that of her second husband at the time, who was Charles Black. And one of those interviewed was her ex-husband, John Agar, Facts available revealed that Agar told the agents she was untrustworthy, but Reagan, the then California governor, had a contrary view because he was one of her strong supporters. Critics concluded that he was out to get back at Temple despite being separated from her many years ago. The aim was to deny her of the appointment as he was quoted to have referred to her as emotionally unstable. Perhaps the state needs to think twice if they're considering using her for such a sensitive post, because Temple, he said, would overreact if she didn't get her way. 
He still believed that her mother destroyed their marriage because she got in the way of the union unnecessarily, regularly and overbearingly. Although his assessment and opinion failed because several others had opposing views, especially Reagan, who described Temple as a very courageous woman of the highest morals. As a teenage star, Temple helped millions of Americans overcome the emotional effect of the Great Depression with her acting talent. She later committed her loyalty to the Republican ideology and was willing to serve her country in that capacity. Temple became a public servant as she represented the U.S. as an ambassador to Ghana and later Czechoslovakia. At the peak of her child acting career, which she began as early as three years of age, Temple was such a big thing in the industry that she was earning an extraordinary sum of money amounting to about $50,000 per film. After marrying Agar, months leading to her adulthood, Temple continued to appear in movies until she was 22, the year she turned her attention to charity work, and her Republican views had attracted the attention of renowned Republican politicians. So when President Nixon wanted a bureaucrat for that honourable post, her name ranked high on the list of possible appointees. Some of those interviewed by the FBI included her former teachers, plus her credit history and so on. Temple divorced Agar in 1950. A portion of their divorce document revealed that she accused him of subjecting her to mental torture, having tolerated grievous mental suffering and extreme cruelty, she asked the court to dissolve the union with the requisite benefits that accrued to her. It seems after the two separated they became sort of enemies, because they never communicated or asked to know how the other was doing, that is some of the things Agar told the FBI agent that spoke with him. On her side, Temple would later acknowledge that she was in a haste to get married at the time, saying that she had marriage on the brain, because she wanted to be the first girl in her class to get wed and by the time she met a well-built handsome gentleman like Agar, he was more than a fit for her dream man, but when that marriage ended some revelations emerged of how the couple entered into a stormy marriage from the onset. While Temple had an initial fantasy of enjoying a fairy tale marriage with Agar, the reality was that he may not have been the right person for the Prince Charming she craved, not when he told her just ten days after their wedding that he would have been happier if he had married someone else. As reported, a beauty with long legs which had come after drinking himself into a stupor that fateful day. Agar's drinking lifestyle became the biggest obstacle in that marriage, and critics said he did not show any remorse when that union ended. Some analysts theorised that Agar was unable to handle the popularity that came with a marriage with a lady seen as America's darling, the reason he turned to alcoholism to boost his ego. But he soon realised that even after featuring opposite her in Adventure in Baltimore and Fort Apache, her fame is not the kind he could compete with, meaning that he would remain under her shadow, of course not the kind of life an ex-soldier like him would want to live. I still believe that something was left unsaid, or do I say unheard, about that marriage, but that would be a fruitless argument. The marriage ended, but not his career, because Agar went on to play a few notable film roles, including one alongside John Wayne, the Sands of Iwo Jima, and she wore a yellow ribbon, all in 1949. Agar, who was beginning to find his fit as a leading man, played a supporting role two years after in the Kirk Douglas Western along the Great Divide, and kept progressing gradually but steadily. Agar was on top billing in The Mole People and The Invisible Invaders, just to mention, he made an acquaintance with John Wayne, who was said to have also approved movie opportunities for him. His role in 1969's The Undefeated will suffice. I still recall how the masses descended on Agar angrily after the divorce. Almost everyone turned against him for what they thought was an ill-treatment of their lovely young beauty. I guess all that must have contributed to Agar's frustration, which made him deep himself further into more liquid, which earned him even more arrests for drunk driving. He later found success in Hollywood B-level science fiction like Revenge of the Creature and others. John Agar had a better marriage when he met and married a second wife. This time it was fashion model Loretta Combs. Their wedding in 1951 and subsequent marital life may not be the best of its kind, but it was much better than the former, 
as they remained together until her demise. That marriage gave him two sons. Agar was also reported to have stopped drinking at some point and ventured into sales in the area of insurance and real estate before his death. John Agar was reported to have died in 2002 of emphysema, and for his daughter, Linda, from Temple, rumours have it that he had little or no connection with her after divorcing her mother. But the thrills don't stop there. Get ready for our next video where we delve into the captivating story of how Peter Cushing became the master of suspense. Watch this video now.